Thanks for tuning in to the HR Chat Podcast. Hey, this is Bill Bannum, one of the hosts of the show. Just before we get into today's episode, here's a quick message from one of our supporting partners. We get people. We know what they want from work, why they join, why they leave, why they stay. We get tech, and we understand that it's never the whole solution. At Talent Solutions RPO, we work across every industry and talent market in the world. In the end, it's people who make the difference. Let Talent Solutions RPO help you get the people your organization needs. Visit mpgtalentsolutions.com slash hrchat to learn more. Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to another episode of the HR Chat Show. I'm your host today, Bill Bannum, and joining me on this episode is James Hudson, former Global Head of Talent Acquisition over at Nike, Senior Director Talent Acquisition at Levi Strauss, and current contributor at Forbes. James is a global TA leader and DEI champion, curious, mindful, analytical, data-driven. He's also wearing a cool baseball cap today. Uh, James says his experience lies in building and leading in-house recruitment teams globally in digital commerce, brick and mortar, and omni-channel environments. This is the third time I think James and I have had a little chit-chat. He's a lovely chap. James, welcome to the show today. How are you? I am pretty good, Bill. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's a real uh, honor to be here. Well, thank you for joining us, considering that you had a mammoth day of travel yesterday, flying back from Europe to uh to the bay area so i appreciate that because I, I i i've done that journey I, I know that it can take it out of you um beyond my reintroduction there james why don't you start by taking a minute or two and telling our listeners a bit more about yourself sure i'm happy to um i view my career really in in two halves basically it it, it slices neatly into into two decades i spent my first decade Initially in London, I was very fortunate to join a digital startup. Uh, this was back in the dot-com days when we we didn't call them unicorns or rocket ships, but it turns out that's what it was. I joined a, a small digital business when it, when there were fewer than 200 employees and less than $40 million in revenue, and was just super fortunate to be able to stay with that company as we grew triple digit year over year for the next decade. And I built out the internal recruiting function and, and helped open offices and facilities in New York, in New Jersey, in Hong Kong and Shanghai. Uh, and I think everything that happened during that first decade of hyper growth helped set me up for my next decade where I've been, quote unquote, in, in corporate America ever since. I, I joined Levi's initially in Europe and spent a couple of years crisscrossing Europe, rolling out some software, Workday, for those of us on the road, recruiting and HR side of the house. Uh, and that then led to my promotion to the top job, which brought me to California seven years ago, where I've been ever since. That all sounds great, but don't you miss the the weather in the UK compared to California, right? Don't you miss all that rain, James? Having literally just gotten on a plane from Europe, uh, I can categorically say the answer to that is no. Um, <laughs> what I do miss is just the proximity of, you know, different countries and cultures we were just in europe for 10 days but we we started in london we went to my family in the cotswolds then we flew to vienna and then from vienna we got an overnight sleeper train to amsterdam had a couple of days in amsterdam and and flew home uh from there and so we were able to pack an awful lot in in just 10 days and when i lived in central europe in belgium i used to do that every week both for work uh, but also at the weekends, I would hop on a train to Paris or to Amsterdam or to London or to Milan. And I, I do miss the proximity of different cultures, different languages, different countries. I love America, but I can get on a train or a plane for five hours here and I'm still in America. Wherever I end up, even though it's a different state, the language is the same, the food is the same. The weather might be different, but I, I do miss that about Europe. 
five hours five hours you can get to beautiful canada you know i'm just putting it out there as a proud canadian passport holder i i am one to always push the the lovely white north you should totally check it out um now that you say that your superpower is process simplification uh leveraging technology and reducing friction in enterprise-wide systems james so can you share some ways that you've helped to enable recruiting teams and hiring managers to spend more time on the most valuable creating tasks and, and why that matters sure um whilst i've been uh a head of ta for for a long time now i've i've always over index more on the operations side of the house. I think that's because the way my brain works, I'm a, I'm a systems thinker. I like to view the enterprise as a whole and try to understand, you know, where, where we as a talent acquisition function sit in relation to the enterprise and, and, and what the enterprise does and how we can best enable that. Uh, so I think it's partly the, the way that my brain works, partly because I spent my first decade in a tech startup that I, you know, grew up around technology that I've, I've always wanted to understand how new and emerging technologies can enhance and enable the service that we're here to deliver to the, to the organization. I view recruiters and recruiting very much as a partnership role to the organization in the same way that HR should be a partnership role. And part of being a great partner to the organization is a understanding what the organization needs us to do. What's the what's the 90 day horizon? What's the three year horizon? What's the five year horizon? And how are we set up to support that? But then also, how are we operating as efficiently uh, as we can be? Are, Are we are we agile? Are we nimble? And are our processes scalable? And again, I think that be- comes from having spent a decade in hypergrowth that you can't just be building a function that works for today. You, you have to uh, have a view to, are we still going to be able to do this at scale in, in three years in a cross-border multilingual environment? And that's always the frame of reference that I've used. The HR Chat Podcast is one of the world's most popular shows offering insights and tips from HR pros, business leaders, industry influencers, and tech experts. World of Work topics covered include HR tech, AI, leadership, talent, recruitment, employee engagement, wellness, DEI, and company culture. The show, produced by the award-winning HR Gazette, has released over 700 episodes so far, each offering fresh perspectives and tips to help you better understand the changing future of work. Check out the latest HR Chat episodes on your podcast platform of choice and read the latest articles at hrgazette.com. Okay, I love that. Thank you very much. Uh, Here is a quote by you that I pulled from a LinkedIn post that you shared at the end of last year. We're recording this episode, listeners, at at the beginning of January 2024. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, A toxic environment you say is more likely to change you than you are to change it you work for some pretty impressive companies with i would imagine some pretty impressive company cultures over the years uh what do you mean by this maybe i've been living in california too long at this point um but maybe i've been spending too much time on linkedin but over the past year as i've been spending more time on LinkedIn, creating content. And then uh, for the past few months uh, with my weekly column in Forbes, behind all of that, I've been offering free coaching sessions to folks that are either in career transitions that have been laid off. Um, I've given away more than 160 sessions at this point, And it's been a really nice window into how folks are viewing uh, their careers and the the relationship, uh, especially here in corporate America, the relationship between labor and the employer. And it's definitely shifted, partly because it's we've now got so many different generations in the workforce with differing views of what that employer-employee relationship is. And I, I see a lot of the younger generations coming through with very idealistic views of how that employer employee relationship should be and getting 
burnt out when they realize that that's not what the relationship is. Um, and that quote was to try and uh, sum up exactly what I'm seeing in my coaching sessions that sometimes as much as you might want to change an environment, it likely isn't going to happen unless you happen to be the CEO and you have to be the captain of your own career. And sometimes the kindest thing you can do for yourself is to just change environments because otherwise the environment will change you. Workbrite is an onboarding and recruitment platform for HR and recruitment teams. And we're pleased to support this episode of the HR Chat Show. Our team is on a mission to ease administrative burdens and form I-9 pain for HR professionals. Workbrite's market share in the onboarding space has been increasing exponentially in an uncertain I-9 world. In her tenure with the business, Workbrite has achieved triple bottom line status as a B Corp and consistently places on outside magazines best places to work with strong financial results of 40% YOY growth and profitability. Learn more at workbrite.com. And now, back to the show. Hmm, interesting. Okay, we don't often get folks on this show who um who are so forthright and say that uh the expectations of young people are to use your term there idealistic or maybe unrealistic would be another uh word to use there. Um I wanna probe this a bit more, um, because you know, we talk on the show quite a lot, for example, that um the Gen Zers, they won't join a company if if they believe that uh, that company doesn't align with their values. Are you saying there, or are you suggesting perhaps that actually sometimes you've got to suck it up? You've got to join a company. You've got to you've got to get your experience. Uh, you've got to, you've got to learn your stuff before you can be in a position where you can pick and choose and, and you can make a difference. No, I'm saying the opposite actually. In that, because uh, I also believe we should try wherever possible to work for organizations whose values uh, align with our own. We spend so much time at work and especially in a role like mine, where I have to motivate large teams of what are essentially salespeople, right? Recruiters are selling the most crucial thing in the organization, which is careers at the organization. And if we can't sell a career, we haven't got hope in selling anything else in my view. So I believe very strongly that we should try uh, and work for organizations whose values align with our own. At the same time, I also recognize the extreme asymmetry of information in the talent market. And what can often happen is that you think you've joined an organization whose values align with your own. And then you ultimately learn that that is not the case and then want to try and change it to, to more, to more, to mold it, to reflect the values you think the company said they were uh, aligned with and that you are aligned with. And unfortunately, you, you again, unless you're the CEO, if it turns out that the values of the organization don't align with yours, the best thing you can do is move on because otherwise you'll end up contorting to the organization. And, and that's, where the, uh, that's where the burnout and the stress comes because you are living in an inauthentic environment and trying to conform to values that don't align with your own. I want to uh, pick you up on your coaching sessions a bit more. Um, I think that's a great thing to do, by the way. So kudos to you. Uh, why is why is coaching or why is mentoring so important? And what are some of those challenges, given that so many folks are working remotely now? So previously, a, a, a mentor, a coach, could perhaps get with someone in person. I, I do believe that uh, you can get more from a session when it's in person often. Um, but with with so many folks working remotely, um the, the dynamics have changed why is it so important to have a mentor and do you would you agree with me that you can't maybe get everything that you can from a session that, you, that, that that's online compared to uh, an in-person version thanks for tuning in to the hr chat podcast the way you plan administer and track compensation plans matters to your company and employees CompTrax is part of HR Soft and our compensation management solution gives you a highly configurable platform designed to support and evolve with you over time. Break free from manually intensive processes and spreadsheets and elevate compensation planning with data-driven decision-making for managers, HR, and executives. Compensation strategy is unique to the DNA of your organization. Make sure your HR technology is up for the task. Learn more at CompTrack.com. And now, back to the HR chat show.
so a few things. The origin story of the coaching is uh, in the spring of last year, my partner and I were in a horrific car wreck in Los Angeles, uh, airlifted to hospital bad. And we were in UCLA, Ronald Reagan for a few weeks, and I will be forever grateful for the treatment that we received there. And whilst it was horrific, it it could have been a lot worse. You know, we didn't die. We didn't walk away with life-changing injuries, though we did have a long road of recovery after we left the hospital. So I had a lot of time on my hands, and I was spending more time on LinkedIn because I was noticing that there had been a gold rush of content creators coming to the site, creating, you know, at best erroneous and at worst, you know, very cynical content around careers and how to get hired and uh, and all of that stuff. And I realized that I actually have a depth of expertise in this area and that I, that I was in a position to offer factual information of how the hiring process worked. Um, so I started out with creating posts explaining how recruiting teams actually operate and therefore what you need to do as a candidate to navigate that. Um, and then I realized that I could do more by actually speaking live uh, with people. And so that's the that's how the coaching sessions began. Because I've had and been very fortunate to have such an international career, my network spans the Far East, Europe, and here in the United States. And so, of course, it's super practical for me to offer virtual coaching sessions because then I can speak to, to folks all over the world, uh, which is really, really rewarding. I do agree, both for coaching sessions and actually for getting certain types of work done, that being in person is far more productive. I certainly don't agree that we need to be in an office five days a week. And I I believe the future of the work is going to be a sort of hybrid setup with folks doing some of their work alone from home or in co-working spaces, and then teams coming together either monthly or quarterly to unlock the type of stuff that can only happen in person. Um, And I think the same is for coaching. Like, of course, I can get more from from a live session, but the trade-off to be able to speak to people all over the world, I think, is is worth it. Going back to the mentoring piece, um, can you can you point to any any folks, any mentors in your earlier career, perhaps perhaps in the last few years, um, that have made a particular difference for you? Um, if you'd like to name names, please do so. Um, but also, if you have had great experiences with mentors, James, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about why how how they helped to develop your career. Sure. I, well, I think it's I think it's both. I have been fortunate to work for some really fantastic leaders that have helped nurture and grow my career in partnership with me. And I have been the benefit of um, executive coaching throughout throughout my career as well. And I've worked with some great coaches in Europe and some great coaches here in the US. And I, I definitely think it's it's a combination of of both having had the privilege of working for fantastic leaders that believed in me and I believed in them and that you could you know that when that symbiotic magic is unlocked in that in that situation it's really powerful uh for your career um but then you have to supplement that with coaching I believe to truly see your blind spots and be able to get to the next level so someone that I think is pretty cool and offers great advice and leadership and all the rest of it uh, is a mutual connection. That's Jeff Wald. That's how you and I were connected. Um, uh, I just want to do a quick shout out for Jeff here because I love him. I think he's a wonderful human being. Um, what would you say about Jeff? Uh, what, what impact has he made on the world of work in his career? I don't want to... Uh speak out of school, but I have been uh, super fortunate to get some insight into uh, what Jeff is currently working on. And I don't know how public that is. Uh, So I am super excited for what is coming next, but I I, I don't feel that I can say (laughs) anymore because I don't know how far along on that, on that journey he is publicly. 
Okay, that's okay because uh, I recently interviewed Jeff and uh, he said, Bill, we've got big news, but we can't talk about it yet. But he said, Bill, <laughs> he, said, he said, when we when we can talk about it, uh, you get exclusive interviews. I said, okay, done. I'll, I'll take it, Jeff. I'll take it. Um, so, we, so you need to wait for we, that. We just you should to... wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but for now, we can both agree that he is a lovely human being. Um, we are coming towards the end of this particular conversation already, James. Before we wrap up, how, how can folks learn more about you and, and also connect with you? Find me on LinkedIn. Uh, reach out to me there. I open my calendar every Tuesday morning for free coaching sessions. The slots do go very quickly, uh, but they are available every week. Uh, and then I have a weekly column in the careers section on Forbes. Rock and roll. Well, that just leaves me to say for today, James, it's been lovely getting to know you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, sir. You, you're a good one. And thank you very much for being my guest today. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And listeners, as always, until next time, happy working. Thanks for listening to the HR Chat Show. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette? And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.